What is up YouTube? It's SK Summer here once again with another video of Terra Online Consolation. Now this video is not gonna be a full guide, it's technically gonna be a guide towards tanking as a brawler, but it's not gonna be a fully in-depth guide. And I just wanted to point that out right now because I wanted to post this video after I hit 65 so I can get the feel for the infuriate skill because apparently that skill is really really good. And I just wanted to wait until then, but controversy has come up, and a lot of brawlers have been taking heat, and I understand why they've been taking heat, but a lot of people have been taking heat about being a brawler and trying to tank dungeons, and I want people to understand it's not really their fault that we can't, that the class can't hold aggro as well as a lancer, but it's still good at holding aggro for the most part. Now, first off, if you're mad at a brawler because they can't hold aggro in one of the lower dungeons, like this dungeon that we're showing right here on the screen, uh, this is what? This is uh, Celeron Sky Garden where I'm tanking Barat Kiyu, uh, Ice Frost Giant, I guess is what you would call him. Um, this guy is not really that easy to tank because you, as a brawler, you lose aggro pretty quickly on him. Like, if I'm not in growing power and I'm not constantly mocking, I will actually... Provoking, sorry, I'm used to another skill called Mock. But if I'm not constantly provoking, I'm not going to keep aggro all the time. Like, I lose aggro in my last few seconds of when my provoke is up on CD. And I'm like, okay, just give me one more second and I'll re-provoke and I'll grab his aggro back and we're back on track. I want people to understand that brawlers are not just bad at their job. Yeah, some people that are coming into the game are thinking, you know... I'm going to make a brawler looks like a cool class. It's going to be a DPS class because giant fists and all these devastating attacks. That's not the case. The class is meant to tank. The class is meant to be there as crowd control. The class is meant to deal damage to cold aggro. And this is what this is going to be about. This is what I'm going to be trying to teach you all throughout this little mini guide, I guess. And I get that it frustrates people that these brawlers are coming in and they're just like trying to DPS and they're dying and getting the rest of the party killed. And they're running all around the map because they're trying not to die and they're not using their skills properly. But, I mean, at that point, point them towards a guide. It doesn't have to be this guide. It can be another person's guide. There are tons of guides out there. Well, not really tons, but there are a few guides out there that tell you what a brawler is supposed to do. And you can actually point them in that direction. Now, I will go on to state that not all the guides are up to date. I went through the wiki, actually, and the wiki is terribly out of date. Some skills don't even do what they say they do anymore. Some skills are having, like, incomplete text or missing text. So don't follow the wiki if you're actually looking to find out what the brawler skills do. It'd be better off just actually going down your own skill tree when you're in game and finding out from there and figuring out, you know, what two plus two is at that point. So punch is your main skill and it actually leads into everything else you do in the game from this one skill because you're going to combo with counter to actually gain access to other moves as well as recover MP. And then we have counter. This is going to be your combo attack to your punch, as well as your block skill, which every attack that leaves from punch has a forward guard in it. So if you do a punch one and then a counter to do a second attack, it'll also have a guard stance on it. So you won't be hit through that hit. This goes for every punch combo up to punch four. Punch one being punch followed by counter to stagger the enemy with a heavy blow. Punch two being punch twice, followed by counter to knock the enemies into the air. Punch three being, you know, hit the enemies three times with punch, then followed by counter to do a whirlwind attack that sucks in enemies. That one's actually pretty cool. And punch four being the punch that knocks down enemies after four punches plus counter. You also want the glyph for counter that allows it to give you a 60% chance to increase all skill damage by 25% for 6 seconds after a perfect defense because you get perfect defenses a lot more than you'd actually think. And now we get into one of your most used skills and your first skill that you're actually going to be spamming to keep active and to dual damage because this is your biggest this is one of your biggest damage dealers. This is one of your constant damage dealers. The skill jackhammer. The skill is pretty powerful because it has a short cooldown and every time you use the skill it deals 8 hits depending on your positioning it deals 8 hits you gain 1% of rage every time and as well as that you decrease the enemy's endurance which is their defense by 1% 
for every hit up to eight times so the max stack on that is eight like I said you're gonna wanna have to deal that skill every time you can I mean just because you wanna keep the debuff active and you wanna make sure that you're ready to be able to use the next skill which is gonna be roundhouse kick so roundhouse kick is gonna be another one of your go-to skills it does have a lengthy cooldown I believe the cooldown is about 12 seconds but if you actually put the glyph on it goes down by 1.8 which is a very big deal that's almost two seconds off and then you have another glyph that makes it so whenever you use roundhouse kick your attack damage for your next skills it within the next three seconds go up by 15 percent so you see why you're going to want to use that directly after your um your jackhammer but i gotta mention that the roundhouse kick has to land for the skills glyph to activate so the next skill we're going to look at is Haymaker, and Haymaker is the other one of your two major DPS skills. The first one being Jackhammer, of course. Haymaker is really good. Okay, so let me put it this way. One of the glyphs on Haymaker triples the chance to crit. The other increases the skill damage by 25%. And then the one that's the most important is... The one that gives it a 20% chance to eliminate the cooldown. Now, I know you're thinking 20% chance, that's not that much. But in the way that you're going to use it to tank, that 20% makes a huge difference. Because of the rotation that you're going to put your skills in, just so you can set up to tank. So, another one of your skills is going to be um, Pile Driver. And that's usually used right after Jackhammer. Because it's linked to the skill, first of all. This skill is really good as well because of the three glyphs it has. And I know you're thinking, man, these glyphs are going to add up. I'm probably going to run out of points. But it's going to equal out to be perfect at the end. One of the glyphs is a 6% chance to eliminate the cooldown for Roundhouse Kick upon successfully hitting a monster. That's amazing. It gives you a 2% rage build per successful hit. That thing has like six hits on it. And then it increases the skill damage by 25%. That's a colossal amount of damage, to be honest. So before I go into this next skill, I want to go back into counter. Because counter is going to be your masterpiece skill. It's not even going to be your masterpiece skill for this set, because you're not really going to use it. It's going to be there all the time. Alright, so if you get a perfect guard with counter, you automatically build 200 rage. That is monumental. Now you're thinking... How's that gonna be part of, you know, how's it gonna be part of my DPS if I have to block all the time and I'm not gonna be able to put out skills? Well, first off, let's drop the term DPS because brawlers don't deal in DPS. They deal in burst damage. That's always gonna be a thing that's never gonna change. Brawlers deal in heavy burst damage to keep aggro along with their main tanking skills. And I'm actually getting really tired of people using the term DPS without knowing what the term means. I mean, so now we get to the skill that a lot of these new generation brawlers are sleeping on. And this is Growing Fury. Growing Fury is an amazing skill. But let me get into this skill real quick. Once you use it, you start burning rage. So you have to have a full rage bar first of all. But you start burning rage 300 rage per second. It increases your power and crit by 30. But with the glyph, you gain 25%. I mean, you get 25 more power. Not 25%, just 25 more power flat. It draws 10% more aggro. That is really important right there. Increase the size and range of your melee attacks twice times two by 10%. So that's 20% bigger range on your melee attacks, which means if your hits weren't going to hit, they more than likely will now. All right. So the next one is reduce skill cooldown by 30%. Everyone needs to understand how important this is. Everyone needs to understand how important this is. Not even just the brawlers. Yes, that sets up your cooldown for your um your jackhammer. It sets up your cooldown for your haymakers. It sets up your cooldown for your for your kicks. It sets up your cooldown for your for pile driver, for provoke, for all your skills except for growing fury, which is the really infuriating part. But that's fine. That's fine. We're gonna live with that. But I mean, come on, just think. If Growing Fury was affected by Growing Fury, it also has a glyph that reduces cooldown by 20 seconds. 
that would be kind of busted, broken, all of the above. But the point is, this skill is good. So in addition to that, it blocks frontal attacks while you're casting this skill, which is great because you can't be knocked out of it in the middle of cast. That's perfect. In addition to that, it puts a frontal block on all skills used after that, all attacks used after that, as long as that skill lasts. So wait a minute, you're telling me that if I start this, if I'm able to time this to the beginning of a boss's onslaught attack, like just a random boss's attack where they just go all in and combo the crap out of you, if I time that to this and start using any of my skills after that, I can get perfect guards which leads to gaining back 200 more rage while I'm doing attacks that increase my rage like jackhammer, like pile driver, just to name some of the skills that give you rage with the lowest cooldowns while I'm having a 30% reduction on my cooldowns. A frontal block on top of all of that, so I'm gaining back rage, losing 300 rage, gaining back rage, possibly gaining 200 more rage for perfect guards, and all you're gonna do is limit me by one skill that I barely use and another skill that can't be used while in progress of using this skill? Why are we not funding this? And because of that skill, you would think, you know, brawlers are pretty good at burst damage, which is true. But let's get into Provoke. Provoke is your first skill you get that lets you that lets you taunt the enemy and gain aggro off of enemies that are in like that are presented in the skill circle. The skill has a glyph to reduce the cooldown by 20%. That's a pretty good cooldown reduction because it goes down to like 16 seconds per use. So it's really good regardless. But I mean, once you get set up, you're not even going to use and provoke that much. You're going to use and provoke in instances where, you know, you probably screw up or something happens to where you die and you need to revive quickly and go grab aggro real quick so everybody can set back up in their positions. Now I'm going to get into a very useful passive that not many people know that the brawlers have because nobody goes into the passive list for some reason. Nobody actually goes and looks at this stuff. But the passive is called Deadly Fury. And it activates when you're about to die. It consumes all rage left. The way it's worded, it seems all rage left, which means I guess if you even have like a smidget of rage, it consumes that and gives you back 50% HP, which is monumentally great. Like when you're down to that one spot where you know, oh my god, I'm going to die. The healer can't heal me because they're running away from the monsters. The other DDs aren't focusing on getting the monsters off the healers because they, can, they actually have the ability to do that with how much damage they pump out on the smaller mobs that spawn off a boss. Now you just burned all your rage to stay alive, you have no rage left, you're blocking trying to stay alive, and you realize the boss has an opening coming up. This is where Mounting Rage comes in. Mounting Rage gives you 50% of your max rage, and then it gives you 50 rage per second for the next 20 seconds. That is monumental. The only downside is you can't use Growing Fury while you're using this skill, while the skill is active rather. So while you're gaining the 20 HP, I mean the 20, um, rage per second you can't use growing fury that's fine that is perfectly fine because that's where invigorating rage comes in invigorating rage is your one heal skill and this skill is pretty good because this skill once you use it you burnt off that half of the rage you just gained and you gain 40 percent of your maximum hp and 40 percent of your maximum mp again all the while you're still gaining back the 50 rage per second for the next 20 seconds and both Invigorating Rage and Mounting Range have a 20% cooldown glyph? Now that's what I call synergy. Now you're wondering, how is it synergetic? How is this synergy? Well, you still have your um your ground pound, which gives you 3% on your glyph, plus the rage that you gain from regularly using ground pound. You still have your jackhammer and pile driver, which giving you more rage. At no time, you'll be back at full rage, ready to use Growing Fury, ready to pick up all aggro, and you're set. If that's not synergy, I don't know what is. You also have your high kick, but that doesn't really do much towards bosses. It just gives you rage. And then you have your flip kick, which it says it stuns enemies for three seconds. So I'm wondering if that works on bosses with like a high percent success rate, or if that's just like an RNG thing. And it also gives you back rage. It's another useful skill. I mean, it does damage and it gives you rage. And then there's ground pounder. This skill is just really good. I can't believe I haven't. I didn't go over this first. But this skill is really good because it builds rage, it gives you a frontal block, and it deals so much damage. On top of that, you can cancel out of it using your um your quick dash, and then you can go into like Haymaker, or you can just cancel out of Haymaker with your quick dash, which yes, you can cancel out of Haymaker. If you're within Haymaker and the boss is switching to do like 
some overpowered move that's going to one shot you or wipe the party or whatever, you can quick dash out of that and just take off in whatever direction you use using Bull Rush. Mentioning Bull Rush, stop using Bull Rush in the middle of a tanking. Stop using Bull Rush to move the boss around the room if the boss does not need to be moved. If it's a humanoid boss without push resistance, then move the boss into the corner, move the boss into a wall, have the boss face the wall, and you're fine. You don't need the Bull Rush or boss all around the room. Now, if the boss gets off of you and goes to run to attack someone else, then yeah, Bull Rush, grab the boss, and run it back to the wall. Or Bull Rush, run the boss around until you have your your, mo your provoke ready again, and then, you know, get him back to the wall and provoke and be ready to set up. But even then, be courteous when Bull Rushing the boss back to, you know, your setup point. Because the mages are still going to be casting, the archers are still going to be casting, your damagers are still going to be trying to deal damage to this boss, even when you're pulling it around the room. While Bull Rush does generate aggro, the amount of aggro it generates is negligible. So, just avoid doing it while you're tanking. So at 65 you get this skill called Infuriate, and Infuriate is a monster of a skill compared to, you know, the rest of your other aggro skills that you get, like the skills that let you gain aggro on a monster. Infuriate challenges enemies within 10 meters and draws maximum aggro, which means you have all the attention of the monster. The monster is now enraged, and while the monster is enraged, you actually get a set of perks on top of that. So, Enrage triggers every other 10% on a boss. And when they're enraged, the boss may attack faster and hit harder. On top of that, they gain resistances to stuns and knockbacks, but they may take a little bit more damage. Now, as a brawler dealing burst damage, you can take full advantage of this if you have a focus crystal in your weapon. I mean, you take complete advantage of this. Simply because Infuriate starts the monster off enraged, and you get all the aggro. So now, we're going to get into four crystals that I think the brawlers should always be running on their weapons. And these four crystals are the Wrathful, Threatening, Focused, and Pounding. So this is the last section of the video where I pretty much just go over what these crystals do and how it all comes together. So, so remember as I said, Infuriate enrages the boss. You're going to be tanking the boss the entire time. You're definitely going to be attacking the boss from the front with growing power. And you're definitely going to be using aggro skills. These crystals all work in conjunction with that. You have the threatening crystal that increases your aggro by 62%. That goes on to every skill you hit the boss with. You have the wrathful crystal that increases your crit power by a certain percentage when attacking the boss from the front. You have the pounding crystal that increases your base damage by a certain value. And then you have the focus crystal that increases your crit power against the boss when it's enraged. And that's by a flat value. That's not a percentage, that's a flat bonus to whatever your crit power already is. Synergy. And with that, we're at the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching if you made it this far. Please like, subscribe, and share if you found this useful. Hopefully this gets out there to a lot of the newer brawlers coming into the game that want to learn their class. I know a lot of people like to be told how to play the class that they want to play, but this is the most optimal way to play the class and actually end up in parties and be good at, you know, doing what you're supposed to do. So once again, thank you guys for listening and peace.